Well, this is exciting. I've decided to build a bridge. I've thought about putting a bridge over here since building the layout in the beginning, but I wasn't sure how to proceed. And now, with the, my newly acquired styrene construction skills, I've decided I can build one from scratch. So that's what I'm going to do over the next few episodes. I'm going to go around over there and show you where it's going to go. This is how long the bridge is going to be. And it's going to be up here on these, these three tracks going up the hill. So it's going to be an uphill bridge. And it'll probably fit right in about here. So the end of it will be over here and the beginning of it will be here or vice versa, however you're going. That will mean that I have to cut out this uh, depression and cut it all the way out to the outside. I don't think that'll be that difficult actually. In fact, I may even kind of fudge it this direction so I don't need to completely destroy my hanging lake. But you can't see it, but I think it'll come across about here. So the bridge will start around there and end about here. Um, I fabricated this I-beam out of styrene. I had some leftovers from building the uh, container crane over here. And, you know, I was wondering what I would ever do with them. And as it turns out, it's going to be perfect. This is an I-beam. And I welded this together. And I think it'll work great. I'm excited. This is going to be grand. If you haven't noticed, there was a, uh, um, an image poll on my YouTube community page where I asked people to look at two possible designs for a bridge and choose the one that they thought looked the best. One was a box truss, just a tube, a square or rectangular tube, latticed tube, trussed tube. And the other was a camelback design, a semi-arched. It's not fully arched because it's segmented. The majority of people seem to like that one a little bit better. It was pretty close, honestly. I am enamored of the camelback design. I think it's more interesting than the box uh, girder truss bridge. So that's what we're going to be doing. If you're not subscribed, how about subscribing? And uh, it, it's nice if you give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Thank you, and I'll see you in a minute. Let's go up and take a look at my, my uh, drafting table, which is my dining room table, and I'll show you the designs that I'm working on. I looked at a number of different possible designs for truss bridges, sometimes called Pratt bridges, in the U.S. anyway, because I can, with a, when I'm modeling, I drew it full size. You can't do that with, uh, in real life, 
you know, it's just not possible. Uh, you can't have a piece of paper that's a half a mile long. But in this case, by taping a couple of old pieces of white paper I found and down in the rumbling around in the basement, um, I was able to, uh, to put enough paper together to draw the entire bridge. Now, you're, you can't see the, the whole bridge. The middle of it is here, and the beginning of it is here. But um, I just drew half of it. I just uh, drew some details into half of it. And I don't know that I'm going to do these, uh, the brackets and things exactly how I have them shown. But uh, it was a good exercise to allow me to think about it. And uh, I have the luxury of not having to detail everything exactly for someone else to follow and fabricate behind me. Um, that's the way I used to do it. I, I would make the drawings and other people would come along, take my drawings, and they would build what I designed. One-off designs. In other words, there would only ever be one like it in the world. You know, I designed it, they built it, and they had to understand my drawings. So, um, it's kind of luxurious now because I'm bringing my mind with me. I can take the drawing for reference, but uh, I'll have uh, the benefit of my thinking while, I'm, while I was drawing it to guide me along without having to go ask the guy in the drafting department what in the heck he meant by that. <laughs> and there was some of that going on back in the old days. But I, I'm really looking forward to this. I think it'll be a fun project. One other thing I want to mention, I did go on to do another building like I did the uh, Flats building, Terrace Park. This one doesn't have a name, but I built new windows for it on the lower middle row of windows and the bottom row of windows. The top windows, to be honest with you, they're not below the roof line. <laughs> so it's kind of a a false front. I mean, the, the roof the kind of jig jags up and down across there. Some of the windows are above and some parts of the windows are below the roof line. I couldn't do anything with that. I thought about raising the roof and then I couldn't remember why I did it the way I did it in the first place. So I, anyway, I just left those windows out. But I did the middle row of windows and I did the bottom row of windows and I built new windows for them and then I lighted them. I built a new dimmer panel so now I have two LED dimmer panels and uh, it turned out really good. Here's a picture of them, of it just by itself lit up at night and here's a picture of it uh, with the uh, Terrace Park building. Well, there's the beginning.